Welcome everyone, Chrissy here with Two Sheep One Wheat. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today I have an overview video for you on a board game called Dune Imperium. It is a one to four player game. It is a deck building game and also a worker placement game. If you want to see more videos on board games, don't forget to like and subscribe below. Let's set it up. Now in this game, you are a leader from the great house. You are fighting in battles, you are gaining political influence, and you are forming alliances with the different factions, all for victory points. The end game is triggered by the first person reaching 10 on the score track, or if there's no more cards in the conflict deck. Once the end game is triggered, you can resolve any end game cards, and the person with the most victory points at the end win. So first off, this game is set up for a two player. These are the leaderboards. And here are all the components for the player. We have cards over here that you can later purchase with money, which is called persuasion in this game. We have a few resources over here. We have Solari, we have water, and we have spice. Now on the board, there are a couple of different components here, which I'll get further into later on. All right, so let's take a look at the leaderboards. As you can see, there are two different abilities on here. One, you can play this during the agent turn, and this one is also when you play the agent turn. However, you need a specific card, which is the signet ring, to be able to get this effect here. Now also, with the player setup, you do get cubes, now the cubes, you add these to the faction's influence. And you can also add three little tokens here. These are troops, and this is your garrison later on for the battle. You also get discs, which track your score, and later on will track your high council. That will give you an extra persuasion for buying cards at the end. You also get some control markers, which are these right here. These are if you win in a conflict, sometimes you will be able to gain, gain a control marker, which you would place here, and they come with other benefits here if other people land on them. Each player also has a starting deck of 10 cards. Now, as I said earlier, there is a deck up at the top here, which you are later on able to purchase from. This is the Imperial deck. There is three cards at the end here, and these are reserve cards. These are here no matter what. There's a bunch in the stack. Now, it also comes with some intrigue cards over here. They consist of plot, combat, and end game. Let's just talk about the anatomy to a card here for a second. Now, as you can see these icons down here, these are agent icons. You use these to move your agent. As you can see, these symbols match the symbols that are on the board. Now, what you also get is the effect in the agent box. You gain these when they are played. Now, the cost to the card purchasing it is at the top. And again, the money in this game is called persuasion. So that would be the cost to buy the card. Now, when you are in your reveal stage, you would put down this card and this is the reveal box down here at the bottom. So you would gain these at the end. And this is persuasion. This is how you would purchase the card at the top in the deck. Now you can see all of the resources to the right hand side here. We have spice, we have water, and we have solari. Now to gain these, you get them from cards or from some of the board tiles here. So what these resources are for, are for purchasing some spots that are on the board or in your card ability, sometimes, Let's see if we can find one here. Sometimes, like this one, you'll need to spend two spice and some, you'll need to use an influence and you'll need to use two spice to go up in two spots on the influence track. Now, speaking about the board, you have some yellow triangle spaces. 
These are desert tiles. These are for trading spices. These ones with the purple circle are populated city areas. That helps with military and it allows you to collect troops. These green pentagons up here, that is the Lance Rad. You can gain permanent strategies and advantages. Now over here, this is the faction influence track. This is where you gain faction influence. We have the Emperor, we have Spacing Guild, Benny Jesuit, and Fremen. Now on the other side of the board, we have the score track. You can gain victory points by reaching certain levels in the influence track and by gaining alliance tokens. Some intrigue cards will allow you to gain some victory points. A certain card called the Spice Must Flow, that will give you victory points. And winning some battles will give you victory points as well. Now for setup, you need to place the intrigue cards facing down. You lay out five Imperium deck cards. You add the reserve cards next to it right here. And then you would also place your third agent over here, which later on you can pay to collect. You will place your score disc. You will place your combat markers on the combat track. You will place four cubes on each of the influence track. Three cubes are placed in your garrison as troops. And the rest go to your supply. On your turn, you can play a few different actions, one being an agent turn. And again, this would be playing your agent icons and gaining the effect in the agent box. This will allow you to place your agent on the board using the agent icons. This will allow you to gain some effects or benefits or some resources. This will allow you to move up in your tracks, allow you to gain some resources, or it will allow you to gain benefits. Now on your reveal turn, you reveal all the meaning cards in your hand, and you will gain the effects. Some will be extra troops for your battle. Others will be persuasion to buy your cards. Some places on the board will allow you to set the strength for your combat round. Placing cubes in your garrison and always allowing you to place two in the battle. To help you in your battle, some intrigue cards, the combat intrigue cards, will aid you. These will give you extra points, extra troops, or sometimes will give you an extra benefit. Once everybody has played their cards, you can, you can resolve the combat. Players with the highest number in the track wins. There is a first place, second place, and third place. Now one thing with this two player game that I have set up, you'll need to use house haggle cards, which are just over here. These are basically a computer. It's a rival who competes against you in a solo or two player game. The rival gets a turn after the first player goes. The rival will go and then the second player will go. The rival takes one card and issues an agent out to that spot. It must be an unoccupied spot. If it is occupied, you do need to keep drawing. Now the rival does get to place its agent without paying the cost or gaining the effect. The only effects that it gains is one at the bottom of his card. When placed in a combat spot, it gets to deploy two troops to its garrison. The rival also gets to participate in battles. And that was the overview to Dune Imperium. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe below.